in the previous session we have seen the concept of first moment of area and how the position or location of centroid is derived from the first moment of area let's have a few plans through our previous session before proceeding to today's session now the first moment of area as we have discussed represents how particle is distributed within an area and the first moment of area is being called so because it is being obtained by taking moment of an area that is you are multipl multiplying your area with a distance from the axis in order to obtain first moment of area or distribution of a particle that is why it is called the first moment of area and uh, if we are considering our entire area to be formed using small small areas or small small particles of area GAs then the distribution of total area about an axis that's here xx will be obtained or can be obtained using the equation integral ydu and if we are considering our entire area a and uh, if the geometric center uh, that is the centroid of a represented by g has coordinates x bar and y bar as shown in the figure then the equations for x bar will be equal to integral x dA by a and y bar can be obtained using the equation integral y dA by a these equations are derived using the first moment of area concept now in the previous session we have gone through all these in today's session we will be seeing what is second moment of area now let's see the term second moment of area we know what is first moment of area we take moment of an area you get first moment of area now if we take moment of first moment of area that is you multiply your y dA that is first moment of area with y the distance then you get second moment of area I repeat the moment of first moment of area is called second moment of area if we are cons considering an area dA at a distance of y from x axis then the first moment of area is obtained using y dA similarly the second moment of area can be obtained using or obtained by multiplying y dA with y that is y dA into y will give you y square dA now in the figure as you can see the axis xx is taken as an axis that pass through the centroid of the area G now this is very important because as we are in the introductory session of uh, the second moment of area which is also known as moment of inertia we have to avoid some complex theorems when I say complex theorems since we are at the beginning of our second moment of area we don't have to go through the session or go through those theorems or we don't want those theorem, theorems to interfere now that's why we are considering our axis passing through G if you are considering an axis like in the previous figure this previous figure may be parallel axis theorem and perpendicular axis theorem these two theorems might come into play so in order to avoid that for the time being we are considering that our axis pass through the centroid okay now as I have already said 
when an area DA considered Y from X axis. Uh, the first moment of area can be obtained using Y DA and the second moment of area can be obtained using Y square DA. Now, if you need to find the second moment of area about axis XX, that is the second moment of area A, that is the entire uh, area about XX axis, then you integrate your previous equation, that is integrate Y square DA and you get your entire uh, your second moment of area about the axis. Now please note that the second moment of area is also known as moment of inertia which is uh, very important when we consider solid mechanics. Now uh, as we have seen that is moment of inertia about x axis that is obtained using integral y square d and d uh, previous figure it's being written here that is IGX. Now what is IGX? IGX means moment of inertia an area about x axis about an axis x that passes through G. Moment of inertia of an area about an axis x which passes through g. So igx is equal to integral y square dA. This is what we have obtained previously. Similarly, if we consider an axis, say y perpendicular to x, and this axis should also pass through g. So as we can see in the figure, the x and y meets at g, that means that the origin and the centroid coincides and if we want to find the moment of inertia of the area about y axis that passes through g we can represent igy that is moment of inertia of the area about y axis that passes through g we can find out using integral x square dA which is an e equation that can be obtained in the similar fashion, the similar way as we have obtained the previous equation or the above equation. Now these two terms represents the moment of inertia. <coughs> Sorry. Now what is moment of inertia or what is the concept behind moment of inertia? In order to illustrate this, We'll do an experiment together. Now, you take a book in your hand, a book which does not have hard binds or uh, not, don't take a big book, just take a medium sized book, maybe a college sized notebook, and you keep that book in the similar way as shown in the first figure that's vertical. The first that is top figure. Now you hold the bottom end of the book with your left hand. You hold the bottom end of your book with your left hand. You hold the top end of your book with your right hand. Now and you try to bend the book using the right hand as shown in the arrow in the direction of the arrow as shown in the figure. Now what are you trying to do? You must understand what you are trying to do. You are trying to bend the book about an axis and that axis is being represented using an orange line here. Right? Now you feel a particular amount of resistance being provided by the book against bending. That is a resistance against bending is provided by the book. Now why this book is pro uh, providing a resistance against bending? It's due to the particles in the book, right? The area or the particles in the book are providing a resistance against bending. Now you hold the same book in a position as shown in the figure, second figure. All right. And you hold the back side of the book, that's 
this side with your left hand and the other end with your right hand. Now you try to bend the book in the direction shown by the arrow. Here also the books book sorry the book provides a resistance to bending but you might have already noticed that the bending provider in the second case is very low compared to the first case. Now why is it so or why is the same book providing different resistance in with respect to position or with respect to the axis that you are trying to bend against or bend with respect to. Now why is it different? Now there is one thing that you can know in, from these two figures is that in the first figure if you consider the axis the farthermost particle is the top corner of the book. Top corner of the book. And uh, in the second case the extreme particles are at a lesser distance compared to the first figure or the first case. That is we can say that in the first case the particles are widely distributed compared to the second case. Now what happens mathematically to this equation if you are considering your uh, moment of inertia. Now let us take the case of IGX. Now you can see that IGX is directly proportional to Y where Y is the distance of the particle from the x-axis. Now as the distance of the particle increases, the moment of inertia that is I value increases. Let us say I is proportional to square of Y, right? Okay. And uh, this represents that moment of inertia increases as the particles are further away from the axis and this IGX or moment of inertia represents the resistance of area A provided against bending with respect to x-axis and in similar fashion IGY represents the resistance to bending provided by the area with respect or against y-axis. So if you are trying to bend an area A with respect to x-axis the mathematical quantity or the measure of the resistance provided by that area against bending with respect to x-axis is given by IGX and that about y-axis is given by IGY. Similarly, if you consider an axis Z mutually perpendicular to both x and y here since the figure is a two dimensional figure how the z will be passing through origin and it will be coming out of a screen. If you hold a pen perpendicular to your screen at O that pen will be your z axis. Now the resistance to bending the of area about z axis we cannot at technically say resistance to bending about is an axis because the area lies in xy plane and uh, if we try to bend it it's not possible to bend it's called twisting we are rotating trying to rotate it about is an axis that means that it is we are trying to twist the area right or torsion we might say so that resistance to torsion about is an axis represented by the arrow that resistance to torsion is called 
polar moment of inertia, that's the moment of inertia about z axis, that's polar moment of inertia represented by j and j can be mathematically found using the equation j is equal to integral r square dA, where r is the distance of area dA from z axis. So this is all we want to discuss in today's session. We will have a few plans for our today's session and then we will wind up. Today we have seen what is second moment of area and why is it called second moment of area. It is called second moment of area because here we find moment of inertia by taking the moment of first moment of area. So if we are considering an area A, then the moment of inertia can be of this area A about x axis can be found out using integral y square dA which is represented by igx and similarly the moment of inertia about y axis, uh, the moment of inertia provided by the area about y axis can be found out using the equation igy is equal to integral x square dA and the moment of inertia represents the resistance of an area against bending with respect to an axis and uh, we have done this experiment to understand moment of inertia and uh, we have already discussed what is polar moment of inertia. Polar moment of inertia is the resistance to torsion against of an area against z axis and which is, it is given by j is equal to integral r square dA.